This lecture is on healthcare associated infections. First, some definitions. Healthcare associated infections are infections that are acquired after contact with healthcare services, which can be hospitals, outpatient clinics, or long term care facilities, and also <clears throat> any infection related to an intravenous catheter. This is slightly different from a hospital acquired infection, which is an infection that occurs when there is no evidence that it was present or incubating at the time of admission and appears first at least 48 hours or more after hospital admission or within 30 days of discharge. The burden of disease is high, with up to 15% of all hospitalised patients suffering a healthcare associated infection, and this rises to 50% for patients who are admitted to intensive care units. These infections take a heavy toll on patients, they lead to increased length of stay, they increase costs and they lead to increased mortality. There's a complex epidemiological interaction between host environment and pathogen factors. Host factors include patients being immunocompromised due to factors like old or young age, poor nutritional status and underlying disease, as well as the need to undergo complicated diagnostic and therapeutic procedures. This interacts with environmental factors in that hospital environments contain numerous microorganisms that surround the patient in the hospital. And there are a variety of organisms with both institutional and human reservoirs and a number of virulence factors. These all combine to, pro to produce nosocomial infection. There are multiple sources of infection within the hospital environment. Within the hospital itself, there's the air and the dust, which can be contaminated. There are multiple fomites, such as wash bowls and bedpans, and equipment such as endoscopes and respiratory equipment, which also can be contaminated. Patients have personal medical devices, like intravenous and urinary catheters, and their medical personnel themselves can cross-infect patients, particularly with the use of poor hand hygiene. There are four common healthcare associated infections. Those are urinary tract infections, intravenous catheter associated infections, pneumonia, and bloodstream infections. These are the principles of management of healthcare associated infections. Firstly, the infections are likely to be with different pathogens than for community acquired infections. And the organisms are likely to be more resistant as a result, when we prescribe empiric therapy for hospital-acquired infections, we need to aim to cover a broader spectrum of resistance and use broader spectrum agents. However, if we get positive cultures, the principles of treatment are the same as for community-acquired infections. We're still able to de-escalate to the narrower spectrum possible and perform intravenous to oral switching. Let's use healthcare-associated pneumonia as an example of the differences between community and healthcare associated, associated infections. Firstly, you see different pathogens than in community acquired pneumonia. Atypical organisms and viruses are less likely, although Legionella would be an exception which can occur in outbreak settings. Gram-negative bacilli are more likely than in community acquired infection, with organisms such as Klebsiella pneumonia and Pseudomonas aeruginosa and Acinetobacter which are uncommon causes of community-acquired pneumonia. In terms of gram-positive, Staph aureus is also more likely. As well as having different path pathogens, they're likely to more, be more resistant. So the gram-negatives are more likely to have expended, extended spectrum beta-lactamases and be resistant to cephalosporins, and the Staph aureus is more likely to be an MRSA. You also require different tests. For example, Blood culture and sputum culture are much more likely to be beneficial in healthcare associated pneumonia and you need different empiric therapy. The exact choice depends on local epidemiology and guidelines, but one example might be Piptasa bactam and amicacin, which would treat ESBLs and most Pseudomonas species, or Ertapenem, which would treat ESBLs but not Pseudomonas. Prevention of healthcare associated infections is key. It requires a multimodal approach, and as we've said repeatedly, hand hygiene is the most important aspect. It's 
it's important to remove all unnecessary medical devices, such as urinary catheters and intravenous cannulas. And these devices must be inserted properly in the first place. In summary, healthcare associated infections arise after contact with healthcare services and the causative organisms different from those of community acquired infections in important ways. They tend to be more resistant to antibiotics, so different and broader spectrum empiric therapies are usually required. Once sensitivities are known, however, the principles of treatment are the same as for community acquired infections. Prevention is extremely important with hand hygiene being the most important aspect. It's also important to remove unnecessary medical devices such as catheters and cannulas.